Good morning. I'm reading from the book of 1 Corinthians this morning, chapter 9. And in verse 7, Paul says, Who goeth to warfare any time in his own charges? Who planteth a vineyard and eateth not of the fruit thereof? Or who feedeth the flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock? Say I these things as a man, or saith not the law the same also? For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Doth God take care for oxen? Or saith he altogether for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt, this is written, that he that ploweth should plow in hope, and that he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of this hope. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Do you not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple, and they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. Take care of your preacher. The preacher is an ox. That's what Paul says here. He's an oxen. That oxen is a, is a strong beast. And they use that oxen to pull a plow. And he says, you know, somebody went in there to that farm and they plowed. And they did it in hope that eventually there would be a crop and they would get a part of that crop. And somebody came in there with an oxen and they planted. And they did it in hope that there would be a, a future harvest. And they'd take part in that harvest. And then later on, somebody came along and they, they threshed that field. And they did it in hope that they might take part of that. They might get a part of it. He said, soldiers don't go to war at their own charges. He said, shepherds don't look after a flock without having some of the milk. And people don't tend vineyards without being able to take part of the, of the vintage. <clears throat> and and he's, he's telling us here this morning, he says, you know, the oxen was not to be muzzled while he was treading out the grain. They used the ox to pull a sled over the, the grain that was on the threshing floor that was still in the husks, and that would separate the grain from the chaff, and then they'd throw it up with a pitchfork and separate it out. He said, don't muzzle the ox while he's doing that. Let him have a part of that. What's the whole point of this? Paul is telling us that uh, a part of something that's really important for us as Christians is to make sure that we take care of our preachers. Uh, the preacher has a job to do. It's an oxen type job. He's got to be strong. He's got to be faithful. And he, in a lot of ways, just plods along. That's what that oxen did. And as a result of that, he ought to be able to do it in hope, knowing that he's sharing spiritual things with people. They're going to share carnal things with him. That doesn't mean something bad. It just means uh, you know, as he, he does his preaching and his teaching and his ministry, that he's going to share in a financial remuneration as a result of that. Now, let me preface this this morning as I say this. I don't want any money. I'm not asking for money. Matter of fact, my church takes this very seriously, and they take really good care of Wendy and I. And I am so grateful for that. Paul says he waived his right for this whenever he planted those churches because he didn't want to be asking baby Christians and, and lost people to supply his need. And But here now he's writing the letter back to an established church saying, hey, this is a church's responsibility. They that preach the gospel should live with the gospel, just like the Levi, Le, Levites, <laughs> just like the Levites were able to uh, have their portion through the sacrifices and the offerings that the other Israelites brought. And so I just want to encourage you this morning, pray for your preacher. Your preacher's got a tough job sometimes. Uh, pray for your preacher, love on your preacher and his family. Make sure that your church does a good job of taking care of your preacher financially. It's important. It's a part of our discipleship. Uh, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. And so if we're going to put this into practice in our lives, we need to, to remember that. Like I say, <clears throat> I, can't, I can't brag on my church enough for the way that they take care of us. Uh, they do a really good job of that, and I am so grateful for that. And I just want to encourage you to, uh, to, to recognize the ministry of your pastor and to encourage him. God bless. Have a great day.